In this short overview video, we will take a look at Navigate Structure 2025 and its tool sets to enable the efficient building of concrete structures. In a later video, I'll review some of the rebar features, but in this video we're going to focus in on the tools needed to streamline the building of a concrete model. All of these features are available in Revit 2023, 24 and of course 25. Let's start by looking at some of the updated cloud content. So to do this, we'll select our Navigate Accelerate tab and we'll select Cloud Content. In the Cloud Content dialog, we'll begin by searching for Pilecap. And of course, looking into the dialog here, you can now see that we have a number of Pilecaps inside our Cloud Content library. All of these have been updated to now work with our Manage Concrete Joins tool, which we'll be looking at shortly. Additionally, all of the pile caps will be sized based on the pile diameter. So for example, I might want two times diameter or three times diameter, and that would automatically size the pile cap based on that pile diameter. It goes without saying, of course, that all of these families are optimized to work with our pile numbering tool sets. Okay, let's now take a look at the concrete join tool. So we'll close down the cloud content dialog and we'll begin by having a look at the foundations here. So here you can see that I have a foundation slab and then you can see that I have a series of piles nested into this slab. Now these are obviously singly placed out, they're not part of a large pile cap family. But what I want to do is make sure that these piles will actually cut a rebate into the foundation slab above. So if I just isolate this at the moment, so let's just do that, you can obviously see there are no penetrations or cuts into that foundation slab. So let's now make that join happen. So we'll select the slab, we'll also select the piles here, and we'll go ahead and select our Navigate Structure tab and select Manage Concrete Joins. In the dialog here, you can see that we've already got one row added in, and currently here we have our primary element, which is going to be a pile foundation. What we'll do here is we'll just change this out now. So this is going to be a slab foundation here and we'll join. So we can now see all of those elements have been joined. To have a look at this in a bit more detail, we can obviously isolate this uh, situation here and then we can start to play around with the join uh, order. So clicking switch here, you can now see that we've got the penetrations uh, that the piles made into the cap. So let's just have a look at this in a bit more detail here. So we'll just reset the temporary hide isolate in here and we'll select the foundation slab and then go ahead and isolate this. So of course now you can see that we have all of our penetrations into that slab. Okay, let's have a look at some more joining here. So you can see that I've got this uh, parapet wall going around the top of the structure. We've also got a whole bunch of walls coming in here and you can see nothing's joined and this is exactly how Revit kind of works. Um, some of it's joined automatically. For example, columns and floors are joined, but walls and floors aren't joined and there's a whole situation of things that wouldn't be joined automatically. So what we'll do here is we'll look at joining the walls to the slabs. And to automate this, we'll go to the Accelerate tab and we'll use our Live Selection tool. So in here, of course, I can make a selection of all of the floors, uh, literally just with one click. We'll then add walls to that selection set. And with that Live Selection dialog open, we'll go straight to our Manage Concrete Joins tool. Here, we'll add a new row. And what I'd like to do now is take the floors and then take the walls. Okay, And with this, we can then join. So again here, we get a report at the bottom, so we can now see 100 elements have actually been joined inside here. Um, looking at this and looking at how it's worked, you can see now that everything is joined together. And of course, this makes a huge difference to things like sections. So if I jump into the sectional view here, you can see this view now looks so much nicer. So if I just undo that join, so we'll go back and undo that. You can obviously see now, prior to that join, um, all of the walls and floors look quite um, rough, really. And also, you'll see that you have extra concrete that you wouldn't actually need within the project. So let's actually make that selection again inside here. So there we are. We've got the selection set. Uh, we'll go back and click join again. And of course, with one click of the button, you can now see that everything is joined as required. We'll go back and actually do the rest of the uh, structure in here as well. So I'll just reset my live selection. And we'll go back and make that selection set again inside here. And we'll go ahead and join everything within the model. Now, while we're here, we also optimise pile caps and piles to be able to be joined together as well. So obviously, these are nested families, as you can see. 
But again, if I tab key and select one of these piles here, I will want to be joining the piles to the caps. So let's go ahead and make a selection of those. So again, I'll use my life selection to enable this. So we'll drill down in here and you can see here are all of my uh, piles and pile caps. So we'll make a selection of all of those uh, inside here. We'll add another row in here. So what we want to do here is now get the power foundations and we want to actually join that to structural foundations. So we'll click on join. And we can now see that 400 objects have now been joined together. Again, looking in here, you can now see that we've got that nice little rebate inside each of the pile caps. So of course, that will again make sections look good and also make sure that we've got the correct volume of concrete. So going back and just opening up one of these sections on the pile caps here, you can see now it's cast in the correct hidden detail as we'd expect across those pile caps. Of course, if that wasn't joined and we didn't switch the join order, then we wouldn't have those uh, nice looking details inside here. OK, so that's our Manage Concrete Joins tool. Let's now take a look at some auto dimensioning as well. So we'll go ahead here and open up a plan. And inside this plan, you can see here we've got a number of different um, fire stops here for the rainwater pipe that we're going through the floors. Of course, all of these elements are actually off grid, which means we'll need to tie them back to the grid intersections here. So let's just start by making a selection set of some of these uh, elements here. We'll then go into our Navigate Structure tab and use Auto Dimension. So in here, we can choose our favourite dimension style that we want to actually use here. So I'm just going to use one of these out-of-the-box ones here, actually. We can then see that we can either dimension to the centre of the element or the edge of the element. So in this case, it's quite small, so I want to go to the, the centre in here. And then we can decide whether we're offsetting the dimensions in the X to the left or the right, or with the Y to the top or the bottom. So let's go ahead and actually apply some of these auto dimensions in here. And we can now see we've got the dimensions placed out. Of course, once they're placed, we can just move some of these uh, into more appropriate positions if we want to in here. Okay, And literally just in a few seconds, I've now got a pretty good arrangement of dimensions. We'll do a very similar thing for these elements over here. So again, we can make a selection set of these. We can go ahead and we'll use the same settings here and apply that in. And again, we can see that we've got all of those relevant dimensions shown. Once we've got that, again, we can actually manipulate these to suit, um, tidy them up a little bit, depending on what we're trying to do here. So we'll just move those out, perhaps something like that. Let's move that over to this side. Okay, and we'll do a similar thing down here. So of course, that's an enormous time saver, especially when you've got you know, columns that are off-grid, walls that are off-grid, and so on. Now, going back to linear elements, obviously, if we've got things like beams and walls that are actually off grid, again, we can actually use our auto dimension tool on that as well. So here you'll see that we can actually then go to the edge of elements rather than the center of elements. OK, so just in a few minutes, we've actually managed now to get all of the concrete elements joined and some of the elements dimensioned automatically within some of our documentation. So that's just two tools within the Navigate Structure portfolio. In a future video, we'll look at some of the updates to the reinforcement tools as well. And of course, it goes without saying that when you purchase Navigate Structure, you get Navigate Accelerate alongside it. Okay, hope that was useful and speak to you soon.